Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Thursday morning, and uh, we are getting ready for the first of what I think are going to be two um, events. And overnight, I, I cut a video with regarding this event for Friday. Um, you, if you want more detail, I'm going to just cover it very quickly because I want to spend a little more time on the uh, second weather system. Uh, but uh, the mid-cycle uh, models uh, remain very robust. Uh, the GFS uh, bringing in a solid area of snow here uh, during the early afternoon, uh, during the morning into the early afternoon on Friday. And I, I'll give the NAM a look. I actually didn't even look because I've been focused on a couple of other models. But you know, it looks to me like even the NAM uh, went more robust. It's finally ca catching up to the other models. Uh, and in terms of snowfall, uh, the models have actually uh, continued to grow more bullish. Now, tomorrow, uh, the snow for tomorrow is very tricky because you're going to start out with temperatures obviously above freezing. And they are going to at some point drop into the low 30s and upper 20s during the daytime on um, Friday. But it's not clear to me um, if that's going to happen. I think it is, and if it is, uh, we're going to wind up with uh, every bit of uh, four, five, or six inches, and there's going to be a, some impact to roadways, although the time of year might hold that down. But I, I, my confidence level is not really very, you know, overly high because, you know, starting getting into the, these seasonal vari variabilities that occur, and uh, that uh, becomes problematic. So we have winter weather advisories up uh, in this narrow band that you see here. Uh, looks like, uh, you know, northern Pennsylvania, except for the northernmost counties, are in it. Uh, down to uh, central, south, southern Pennsylvania, you start to get, uh, you know, south of Allentown, uh, and, and, and uh, Lancaster is out of it, but Lebanon County and Berks County are in it, are in it so is Bucks County. Uh, in New Jersey, it's basically along and north of Route 195 under a winter weather advisory, all of Long Island, uh, the lower the Hudson Valley. Uh, from Poughkeepsie uh, on south and uh, in Connecticut, uh, we also have um, winter weather advisories. And they extend further east, by the way. It's just that uh, we've got um, wind advisories still going up, and that's covering up uh, the winter weather advisories and the winter storm watches that are also in effect for uh, southeastern New England, uh, southern Rhode Island, into <clears throat> southeastern Massachusetts. So, you know, let's... Uh, move along now i want to cover the uh, second weather system because i think uh that one uh, it really to me after looking at everything uh it, it it is actually relatively well it's not um nothing is ever simple but i i i can i think i have a good feel over what this is all going to boil down to and i'm going to go back to the to last night's run if my mouse would ever let me, um, there we go. I'm going to go back to last night's uh, run of the models. <sighs> Being very slow this morning for some reason. You know, let me see. Sometimes when my phone is too close to the uh, computer, it j jams the wireless a bit. All right, so we've got this system for Sunday, and one of the things that last night's uh, run of model guidance did is that all of after after showing several runs where this system was weak all of a sudden last night uh, it developed uh, a much more robust low and that's really important because what that does is basically uh, flattens out the ridge off the southeast coast uh, here we are in a winter where the ridge had no problem flying up uh, at any time um, now it, we're going to wind up wanting it to come up. It's going to need to come up to some degree because the next energy uh, is coming down. And what happened last night was that because of that flattening, because that lead low was more robust and a much more of a defined entity, it left less back. And therefore, the new development starts out further east, uh, doesn't have um, as much to it, and you wind up with a low that uh, winds up being out to you know further out to sea probably just impacting the immediate coast with some snow but ultimately it would not be a big deal and that i think is going to be the key here um, when we look at the upper air um, you can see the trough is swinging around because that first system goes out this there's no ridge here it's very flat so this trough winds up 
swinging around and becoming sharper, but it's it's too far to the east. Now, this was last night's run. I want to show you, and, and the European went along with this and, and, and to uh, the Canadian as well. The, the, the 6 C run, the in-between model run, is different. Um, you're going to notice that when this trough swings around, it's it's deeper and left. And you, you'll see, you can distinctly see the difference here. Here's the trough on last night's run. It's there, but it's it's not as well developed. Um, it just kind of moving along. And here it is on this run. And you can see it's much more north-south. This is about getting ready to swing around. Uh, it's it's further. It's a little further to the west. Not a by a lot, but enough. And I think the reason why, again, is going to be um, this system that's off the southeast coast of the United States. Now, here it is last night's uh, mid-cycle run. Okay, it's very frustrating when having um, the computer doing what it's doing. I apologize, but here's the mid-cycle run now, and now we're back to this idea of this low being not as deep, so that you wind up with more energy being left back. Here's the energy coming down with that northern system, and now you're back to a, a low that's a little bit further to the left. I think, honestly, this is the game that we're going to be playing from here on in. In my mind, given that all three models are showing the same idea with regards to what's going on with the upper air system, that you know this is going to happen. This storm is going to develop. It's going to be a question of whether the lead system for Sunday, if it remains weak, that is going to allow for more ridging off the southeast coast of the United States and a deeper trough here, which will bring up a storm up the east coast. If if this first system winds up being more important, and I thought last night's run all of a sudden was a little bit ridiculous because uh, it, it really, with that first system, because when we look at what it did in terms of precip, well, let me just back it up a bit. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, it... it suddenly has precip up into southern Delmarva. I mean, it was just much further north because it had this much more well-developed low, and then out it goes. Um, the European model uh, kind of did something uh, uh, sort of compromised because it, it, it actually gave a fair amount of snow with the upper air energy as it swings around. It kind of had, you know, a surface low with this uh, that was out. I'll, I'll, it's hard to see on the on, on these maps uh, because we don't get to see the the, the really you don't get to see the full European run, but this was the surface generated by the European model with the upper air in the colors here. So uh, you've got, uh, here's your trough, and you can see it. it's flat because it also, the European had has a much more well-defined wave off the southeast coast of the United States with the lead system. If that's wrong, you're going to have this trough further to the left and much deeper, and this is what the European did. It kind of had one low go out, and then it sort of had a a reflection of this energy developing off the Virginia coast. So it actually threw back quite a bit of precip for whatever reason along the coastline. You know what? That's one of those things that that it's kind of silly to see because, you know, it might be there. It might not be there. This could be all nonsense. Uh, but again, the bottom line for me is going to be uh, whether subsequent runs are going to show that system that comes off the southeast coast of the United States on um, Sunday, is it going to be um, less deep, less of a factor, so that this trough is allowed, that you get more ridging off the southeast coast of the United States, and this trough winds up digging further west? What we saw last night in terms of the options of the models with respect to the GFS and to the um, European model is basically what I, I you know one of the things I thought was a possibility uh, along with the fact that you know we have to also uh, keep a look at the strength of the western ridge here because that's important and here's your trough in the east and you know your, your blocking is going to eventually weaken as that uh, as that's just natural you're not going to hold on to the blocking forever and you know you do have a sequence of weather systems moving along after that so um, Let's just backtrack real quick, you know, just to show you uh, in terms of what, what it looks like. You know, here's here's the, whoops, I'm not having a good day today, folks. All right, so, you know, here's your blocking. And here's, this is the, the first uh, lead system that, that's going to bring in all the cold air. 
um, your your ridge starts to build. Uh, here's your energy with the next trough. And you know when you look at this, the energy with the next trough actually you know comes down on this run much you know a little further to the west. And there's your ridge there. You know here's your blocking scenario still intact um, across the North Atlantic. You know you swing it down and around. And, and, and you see what happens if you look very carefully right out here on the South Atlantic those those um, height lines start to come up that is why this lead system is so important because if that's deeper that those everything is going to be um, much colder here you're going to have lower heights or you're not going you're, you need a, a bit of ridging and that's what the 6z uh, run of the model did there's your trough axis is just enough to the left uh, to you know, keep a coastal storm just offshore. You still have enough ridging in the west to support um, support this happening. So we're gonna the the key going forward, as I said, watch this system coming off the southeast coast of the United States Saturday night and Sunday. If it's if it's um, winds up being much uh, a more intense standalone feature then that's going to uh, impact Tuesday system by pushing it further to the east. If it's forecast to be and modeled to be weak, you're going to have a, a deeper storm along the east coast and a track further to the left. It's To me, it's a very simple proposition. Okay, so uh, check out meteorologistjoechoffee.com, latest snowfall accumulation maps regarding uh, what we're going to get uh, for later Thursday night and Friday. My confidence factor is not very high. Um, because of all the all the minor details that are going on tomorrow with respect to temperatures and, and, and intensity of precip. I'm just not sure, okay, but I'm giving it my best shot. I'm thinking a four to six inch general snowfall is possible for most of the area, but you can check those out on the website and you can, of course, uh, of course specific forecasts on the app. There'll be a link coming up at the top of the video at uh, meteorologist, I'm sorry, at um, My Weather Concierge is the name of the app. And uh, it, it's a specific forecast for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley, and eastern Pennsylvania. It's just 99 cents a month. Uh, and um, the, I update forecasts at least twice a day and more often uh, if uh, necessary. And please, if you like my weather videos, uh, it's a big help to me if you subscribe to my YouTube videos on my YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button. That's absolutely free. Uh, and I um, really appreciate it because it helps me with my standing with Google. The more subscribers I have, the more distribution my videos get. And I, I, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. And if you'd like, um, I've, got a, uh, I've got a tip jar on my website, um, a PayPal button. If you want to buy me a cigar, um, I certainly won't object to that. Um, I, I, I kind of feel funny even mentioning it, but, you know, sometimes... It just gets very hard. You do all this stuff. So every once in a while, somebody does, uh, you know, throw me a, a, a spotter to go out and have a cigar and a beer. And I really do appreciate that. A few of you have done that. And uh, to, to that, I say thank you very much. Um, it, 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 it really is very nice. And, and don't feel you're under anybody's under any obligation to do that. I just put it out there. Okay. So everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.